I used to read bedtime stories. I did all of the voices. The kids would laugh so hard. Then the word counter went on my wrist. They put one on my baby girl too. If you had only 100 words a day, what would you do to be heard? Women get electric shocks if they speak more than 100 words a day in the novel Vox, a book about half of the population being silenced that fittingly is getting people talking. As we mark International Women's Day, I'm joined in the studio by a writer whose debut has been called by Time magazine, a novel of the Me Too movement. It's been translated into 17 languages. Christina Dulcher, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It's an honour. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, the 8th of March marks International Women's Day. That's it's right. a moment to celebrate women's achievements while also calling for a more gender-balanced world. With Me Too, with Time's Up, it does seem that we're at a point in history where women are having a chance to be heard, are speaking out. Tell us about the inspiration, though, about your book, Vox, where women's voices have been taken away. Right. It's interesting because my book actually was written before any of these other movements. So I didn't use that as a basis. What I did use, however, was the fact that women's voices were growing even stronger. So I imagined, actually, that there must be somebody somewhere in the world who was thinking to himself or maybe herself, oh, I wish they would just shut up. So really, it was more of a reaction to women protesting more, women becoming stronger, women speaking up more, that led to part of the world building and the background in my book. Okay. And the book's protagonist, Jean, um, talks about her own complacency as um, the world is turning into a pretty horrible place. Right. The marches she didn't attend, the flyers she didn't hand out, the petitions she didn't sign. We're also reminded of these um, grassroots movements that are taking place over recent months and the women's marches around the world. In 2019, what do you think we should be doing if we don't want to be complacent? Voting, I think, would be a tremendously good start. Uh, I learned something fascinating after I wrote the book, after I finished the book, and that was for presidential elections in the US, the voting turnout is about 65%. So if you think about that, it means one out of every three people is staying at home and deciding to effectively keep silent for the major elections. When I started touring Europe for Vox publicity this past summer and throughout this past year, I found that the numbers are about the same in Germany, in England, in Italy, in Spain. So if we don't do anything else, yes, obviously we can protest, we can march, but one thing we really want to do also is go to those polling stations, not just for the, the big elections, but for the small ones, right? Because they count too. Change doesn't necessarily start at the top. Change can start with a little drop uh, in the ocean, right? So let's do that. And as well as them only being allowed to speak 100 words in the book, um, this, woman, this book is set in the near future in the US. Women can't work. Girls aren't taught to read or write. And there are characters like Reverend Carl preaching fear and terror. Oh, okay. The president's wife is a former fashion model. And one repeated slogan is make America moral again. There are lots of contemporary references in the book. They're not subtle. Tell us what your message is. <laughs> you know, I, I wish I could go back, actually, and redo some of these just to make the book a little bit more atemporal, right? A little bit more timeless. The fact is that more than anything, I was looking at a resurgence of the culture of domesticity. This is a culture that separated genders into two distinct roles, yes? Men in the public sphere, women in the private sphere. We saw this in the US and in the UK in the latter part of the 19th century. We saw a renaissance of this domestic culture in the 1950s. If you think about American television shows like Father Knows Best, you might get a hint <laughs> at what I'm talking about. So, you know, it was quite difficult because I think as writers, particularly when we write dystopian fiction, we want to make things seem real, but we want to make them unreal. And so there are some coincidences in Vox that are timely, and that's good. But also I think it's difficult. It makes it difficult because it ties the book too closely to the present time, when in fact some of the messages in Vox about either language or, uh, or speaking up 
really aren't tied to the present moment at all. They're quite timeless. And it has been called um, the modern Handmaid's Tale. Some, some writers have called it that um, because of the dystopian and because of perhaps women aren't allowed to read and write um, in The Handmaid's Tale, um, which was published in 1985. Um, have you been watching the series with Elizabeth Moss? I had to watch the first, uh, I had to binge watch the first season, actually, because I hadn't seen it. And then once Vox was on the table and ready to come out, I was asked to write an article for a stylist uh, in the UK. And the article needed to be about my predictions for what the second season of The Handmaid's Tale, the Hulu series, would, would, uh, would entail. Of course, <laughs> I hadn't watched the first season <laughs> and I was on a deadline. So I had to actually watch the first season in about a day and a half, which I did. Um, but, but I read the book when it came out, of course. OK, well, season three is out in June. I'm a massive fan of the series. Let's take a look at the trailer. It's morning again in America. Today, more women will go to work than ever before in our country's history. This year, dozens of children will be born to happy and healthy families. It's morning again. It's morning again. It's morning again. Wake up, America. Morning's over. Well, let me ask you then, in your book, um, LGB communities suffer in internment camps. Infidelity is outlawed and public shaming is ritual. The Bible belt expands. Right. How do you see the future of America? Oh, wow. Well, I think, I think we are at a point in the States where, where there is a great divide between the right and the left, probably more than ever. I think this is a very dangerous time. I think it's a time when so many different factions and almost tribes, in a way, are trying very hard to silence one another. And of course, going back to Orwell, this is the worst thing in the world that, that, that we can let happen to silence people, even the people we don't like. I mean, Orwell has this excellent quote about liberty. He says, if liberty means anything at all, it means the freedom to say that which someone else does not want to hear. That's what we need to do. Otherwise, I think we're going to end ourselves. And I don't mean to be bleak and melodramatic, <laughs> But, uh, but free speech is of the utmost importance and now more than ever. OK, and that's why these days, like International Women's Day, are important. Um, and in general, there does seem to be an increase in women's voices and events taking place, not just on one particular day of the year. When you think of circus, for example, childbirth, prostitution and rape probably don't <laughs> spring to mind. But a female circus troupe touring France at the moment are addressing these themes in their show. Emerald Maxwell reports. It's a circus troupe with a difference. 16 women brought together for an exclusively female spectacle. A performance full of energy summed up in the title PDF, which in this case stands not for the file format, but for Parte de Femme, lifting women in French. Just three years ago, they didn't even know each other. Their meeting at a circus workshop inspired them to take a fresh look at the discipline, outside of the traditional male-female parameters. They don't have assigned roles here, but the women have had to adapt their technique, jumping less high and finding different ways to do things. Together, they're rewriting the rule book. I guess we have a softer, more precise approach to our work. Not that with men we're not precise, but they have a lot more strength to be able to catch us and recover. While with women, we have to be a lot more technical. Emerging of circus, theatre and dance, the show plays on clichés inviting the audience to reflect on them. Pregnancy, sexuality, prostitution, rape, no subject concerning women is avoided. <laughs> the medium of circus allows us to explore serious or thorny subjects without being heavy-handed or making people feel uncomfortable. 
It really fires you up, seeing so many women on stage doing all those things with their bodies. The comedy is shrewd, and the acrobatics very impressive. It's very powerful. It's a discourse about women by women, which is great, and they poke fun at men a bit, which is never a bad thing. The message is feminist. The delivery, subtle, funny, and just a little mad. It certainly looks very interesting. Christina, do you think since these movements, Time's Up and Me Too, uh, we've seen the demand for production, female-led productions like that, is greater? It seems like that's the case, yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know whether this is really a trend, uh, because a trend, you know, saying something is a trend implies that, oh, it, it's just a fad, it's going to be over. Uh, I do think that more attention has been drawn to you know, to female groups, to female production organizations, production companies, for example. Uh, so, yeah, this is, I mean, it's, it's fabulous that this is happening now. And once again, you know, happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. Okay, well, we're going to leave you with images from WOW, the Women of the World Festival that's taking place um, this week in London. Nine years after its launch, it celebrates women's and girls across the globe, coinciding with International Women's Day. The two-day event will see political activist Angela Davis and author and filmmaker Naomi Klein take to the stage, as well as talks and workshops looking at gender politics. Now, Christina Dulcher, thank you so much. And Vox has just been translated into French. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.